about who I am, where I come from, and what I do. <laughs> so bear with me, all my old timers. I am an ancient astrologer. I do not practice modern astrology. I do not turn my nose up at modern astrology. I have many friends that do practice that method. But I am uh, a, an astrologer of the divine method of astrology. This was practiced by the great prophet Nostradamus. And I am in no way or shape or form claiming that I am the great prophet himself. I am not. But I have found his methods of astrology to be incredibly accurate and very insightful. I received my certification in the divine method of astrology from a gentleman named Dr. Louis Torrey. Some of you may have heard him on Coast to Coast and various other radio shows. He's been around for a long, long time. Um, I also have used this method in accordance with some of my other metaphysical training that I've received through Wicca. And I've incorporated his methods of astrology into what I have been taught through the years. And I have to tell you that I have given more powerful, more accurate readings on people than I, and a lot of others I know out there. And I'm not bragging or anything. I've even, you know, I've had people just look at me and go, how did you know that? Well, the stars don't lie, folks. And I'll tell you a little bit more a little later on what I do in my broadcast. But I'm in no way evil in any sense of the way. And as I harm none, um, walking a Wiccan path in my lifetime, I've learned to respect nature and animals and look to them for messages. I respect my planet, unlike some of my other human counterparts, and I try to help others in the best way that I can in this crazy game we call life. I am a defender of this planet, its creatures, including us humans. I hate injustice. I hate oppression and killing of innocent people and children. And I see things through a very different light. So what I'm suggesting to everyone is I'm not for the faint at heart. I will not lie about the stars and sugarcoat things. If I see something, whether it's in your own personal chart or in the world at large, I'm going to have to say something. You know, this is reality, and you're going to have to hear it. Sometimes life throws us lemons, and sometimes you get, you know, sugar-coated lollipops. It just depends. Now... I walked a very very metaphysical path since I was an early teenager. My family, my dad's side of the family is from Victoria, British Columbia. My mom's side of the family is from Brooklyn, New York via Italy. And I grew up in a household with two Italian grandparents from the old country. I learned a lot of things from both of them. I didn't have babysitters. I had Nana and Nono. And, and, and Zia Mariana, I didn't have some strange lady watching me. That just was, that was just forbidden in my household. <laughs> Which is probably a good thing because I'm kind of the same way with my own kids now. But through the years, I learned a great many things from my grandmother especially. Years ago, we gave her this nickname called Strega Nonna. And in Italian, Strega Nonna means Grandma Witch. Now, in Europe... When someone calls you a witch, whether it's you're Italian or German or Norwegian, this is a word that's used with great pride in Europe. You know, to be called this is a woman of healing power. Here in the United States, in a very puritanical nation that we live in, uh, what do you think of when you think of a witch? Well, you think of a lady, an old hag with a big nose and a wart stirring a cauldron. And even in Native American cultures, many of my friends who are Native say, well, I don't see you as a witch because in Native American cultures, a witch is considered evil. My, my Native American friends call me the alpha star female of astrology, or they call me the medicine woman of the mind. <laughs> I don't care what you call me, just call me. Anyway. I learned some incredible things from my grandmother at an early age. This woman introduced me to things like numerology. She would show me how to do different types of charts and study stars. She always told me when the moon changes, so do people's moods and their emotions. 
And she's absolutely right, because the moon is our emotions. This is where all our feelings come from, is the moon. So, she also taught me some of her holistic healing remedies. These are old, ancient Italian remedies, and I've been blessed and given the opportunity to pass these on down to my own daughters. But my thirst for knowledge didn't end there. And I was raised in a very religious household, even my own grandmother, devout Catholic. Every Sunday she'd go to church, but Saturday nights were for, I guess you want to call it, practicing witchcraft. (laughs) She just dabbled in the stars. The weekends before church was her two nights to sit there and do tea leaves and all these interesting things. So she's always with me. I really do think she's my guardian angel sometimes. So, strega nona, ti amo. I love you. Now, like I said, my thirst for knowledge didn't end there. And through the ages and through the years that I put in, um, I, like I said, I was forced to go to church, hated it, always wished that I would be abducted. I was nine. I hated it. didn't want to go. And I finally stopped going. You know, it made me so miserable that I wanted to stay home with my grandfather. My grandfather saw through the evils of religion himself. So I kind of always wanted to hang with Grandpa because Grandpa knew that religion's all bullshit. Pardon my French. But I am very proud to have had this opportunity to be raised by these incredible grandparents. And my mother, too. My mother worked, so I got my grandparents as my second parents. And through the years, I have been in... I joined my first coven when I was 18. I joined my last coven when I was 32. I am a solitary now, and the reason I say that is because it doesn't matter what religion you practice. We're all humans on this earth. And whether you are, I know, I've known bad Catholics, bad Christians, bad Protestants, bad, bad, you know, Wiccans. And for me, it was, I'm the lone wolf, and it was time for me to go solo. And that's what I did. And I don't regret those years of being taught the ancient path of paganism. It's made me a better person in this world. Now, one of the books that I had read that changed my world was a book I read by Zuzana Budapest, and it was called The Grandmother of Time. This was a book on women's celebration and change, and it changed my world. Then I started reading books by authors like Silver Ravenwolf, Diane Stein, Janet and Stuart Farr, who wrote The Witch's Bible. Then there was this one other author, a male author by the name of Raven Grimasi. He focuses on the strega culture and the old ancient witchcraft of Italy, which obviously, being of Italian descent, really resonated with me. And way back then, you know, when the the rise of the Roman Catholic Church, you went underground and you did this. And I always say Catholicism is Christianized paganism. Christianity in general is Christianized paganism. Especially Catholicism, because you you celebrate Halloween, the day after Halloween, they have this thing in church, you go to church, you light a candle for the dead, it's called All Souls Day. And the Latinos, they celebrate De los Duelos Muertos, Day of the Dead. The Latino population is very religious too. So I'm very spiritual, and I embrace all faiths and all people, and I hope you can have the same respect for me and my teachings. And we'll get along just fine, I think. Um, Let's see. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the the things I do in astrology to help you understand a little bit more about what I'm about. Now, what I might get ready to say might disturb a few people, and I actually thought long and hard about saying what I'm going to say. But I have to say this because... The news in the last few days has been very difficult to watch, extremely difficult. I see a lot of hateful things happening in the world. I see killing of innocent children. I see liberals fighting with conservatives. I see Democrats against Republicans. And in the end, folks, 
I want you to know the two evils that plague this planet are religion and politics. Either party, it's still a two-headed, one-party system, working overtime with their polluted, crap media. And I mean all of them, from the Fox News network, yes, nut work, to the bullshit that's fed down your throat from Rockefeller Plaza and MSNBC, who is owned by General Electric, who makes a lot of money off of the wars that we fight, get stuck fighting in. I'm sick of hearing half-truths and lies and more bullshit about Kim Kardashian's ass. Like I said, my family's from Brooklyn, so I don't mince words, people. <laughs> I see the hatred that is spewed on Facebook, and it's just absolutely disgusting. In the last couple of weeks, it has been heartbreaking to go online and look at things. On to religion now. Now... What I'm getting ready to say is not for the faint of heart, but I want you to understand something. What's taking place in the Middle East, it's prophecy, okay? Religion is coming to an end very, very soon. Between the year of 2015 and 2017, you're going to see some major changes with religion. Through the next few months of hearing my radio show, you're going to hear me talk about a dragon head and a dragon tail. Some of you will giggle and laugh. I get it. Sounds kind of very medieval and kind of knights of the round table. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but what I find interesting as the very birth of all these three religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, all were birthed in the Middle East. Now, the Middle East is a Pisces nation. Do you see how the Christians chose the fish to represent their religion? All religion, most religions, not all, were birthed in this part of the world. But God did not come down and write no books. I'm sorry. I don't care if it's the Bible, the Torah, or the Quran. These are books created and written by man to put fear into man, to control man to divide and to conquer others. That doesn't mean that some of the quatrains and scriptures that are in the Bible aren't true. I think some of the people that wrote some of those books were prophets. The soul's purpose here, though, is to divide and conquer and alienate. And we've got Jews hating Muslims, Muslims hating Jews, Christians hating Muslims, Muslims hating Christians, and on and on it goes. And who, 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 who suffers the most in this? Well, obviously what I'm seeing on the news is the children, and it's heartbreaking. I want you guys to know something, and this is a fact, that 25% of our American tax dollars go to fund Israel. This funds tanks, guns, shells, etc., etc. Now, I'm not going to sit here and... I don't want any of you to think I'm anti-Semitic in any sense of the way, because I'm not. I have Jews in my own family. And even the, the Jews that are in my own family are going, this is disgusting. What have we become, you know? There's an energy that's taking place right now on this planet, and it's the Aryan energy. The, the, every 18 months, we have a shift in energy on this planet. And back in February, before February 19th, the energy of the dragon's head was in Scorpio and the tail was in Taurus. That energy moved on February 19th and it moved into the head in Libra and the tail in Aries. Aries is the lord of war, fire, blood. What do you think? What do we see on the news? What's taking place in the Middle East? It's also, Hitler was in Aries. And that's where we get the Aryan race from. Now, I'm not saying that Germans are Aryans, but Germany takes on an Aries nation. They are an Aries nation. The United States is a cancer nation. My own teacher always talks about this, and he's absolutely right. He says that Hitler's spirit is rebirthing. This energy is with us till about October 10th of 2015. And I have to say, I do see Hitler's spirit. 
except I see Hitler's spirit coming from the Israeli government. Not the Jews themselves, their government. They're turning into the very same people that oppressed them back in the 30s and 40s. They were called Nazis. Now they're doing the oppressing of Palestinians. I don't care how you slice it. Murder is murder, and this is murder. Now, I'm not saying this is coming from the Jewish people, because if you go on YouTube and you log in poor little Lucas, who's a little Jewish boy with his little yarmulke, and he had his little Palestinian flag on his hat, he got the crap beat out of him. And when I was watching that video, I kind of sat there going, holy cow, did those guys just take a cue from NYPD? Because that's kind of how the New York Police Department operates. It was like deja vu all over again. What I'm trying to say is we're getting ready to go into a major religious war. All three religions are going to fight with each other. And it's all going to take place in the very part of the world that this religion was birthed because I'm going to reiterate it again. The Middle East is a Pisces country. And Pisces is the sign of religion. It's the sign of deception. Religion is deceptive. And I can say that honestly by hearing some of my own friends. I have many friends from all different religions and walks of life, but I recently had a friend tell me that she has to give 300 or $400 away a month to her church because it's required while she struggles to put food on the table. i sorry. That's wrong. You take care of your kids. You feed your family you got a little bit left over to give, if that's what you want to do, then so be it. That's your choice. No one's telling you not to. Anyway, let's just say some prayers for the Middle East, because they're going to need it. Now, information that I give you is lost knowledge, hidden from us. I would love to be a fly on the wall and go to the Vatican in their private library. Oh, the things Linda would find in her treasure trove of lost wisdom and knowledge under that Vatican. The Vatican knows this information that I'm giving you tonight about the stars. Every bishop, every pope, every pontiff, every, every man of clergy within the church of the Vatican has studied astrology. However, they've told their followers that anything from the stars is the devil and it's evil and it shouldn't be followed. But tell me this, folks. If you believe in a creator or a higher power that created everything, including the sun, the moon, and the stars, how could that be evil? Through the ages, and I'm talking 10, 20, 30, 40,000 years ago, our ancestors, the Atlanteans, people before them, the Mayans were the masters of you know, astronomy, tell me. How did they know certain things? The Atlanteans especially were very versed in this knowledge. This knowledge, and I don't know if I have a whole lot of time to go through that, like a history lesson on what's going on through the ages, but rest assured, our system knows some of this knowledge, and it's being kept from people so that people don't progress and people don't help themselves. They're needy. They need to go to church and have a, have a pastor or a priest bless them. And there's an expression. God helps those who help themselves. You ever heard this expression? You know what that... I, I had an epiphany about seven years ago when I first started studying this with Dr. Tori. I said, oh my God, that's it. God helps those who help themselves, meaning... Learn how to read the stars. Learn how to read the red lights and the green lights. Learn the universal laws of the moon. And I guarantee you, you will live a long, happy life. Unfortunately, the people that were on board that, that Malaysia flight that was shot down in the Ukraine, they would have had a little bit more knowledge of the stars. They would have known not to fly in a wanting moon. Or at the very least, don't buy your tickets in a wanting moon. If you're going to travel... You make your plans in the new moon, and you will be blessed and protected under the stars, because that is the message. It's not in a book.
It's written in starlight. His message is written in starlight. You just need to learn how to read it. Let's see now. Where was I on my little rant? Let me just explain a little bit. Now, you know, I don't want you guys to think, oh my God, it's her first show and she's bashing on religion and Christ and God. I'm not saying there isn't a God or a goddess or a higher power. But when you look into the heavens and see what you see, don't just take it for granted. Don't just say, oh, those are pretty and call it a day. They're messages for us to learn, and I'm here to help you to learn how to read them. You look to the stars for your answers, and there you will see divine wisdom. Now, I also hear people saying, God hates this, God hates that. God does not hate Jews, Muslims, Christians, or, I mean, you'd be a fool to think this. Or, who is that? My famous, the Westboro Baptist Church. God hates fags. Have you ever seen this? Oh my God, what a bunch of delusional idiots. They're idiots. I don't know how else to put it. Delusional. And they put the fear into people. But I want to say this. Keep an eye on the Vatican because things are going to get interesting. Remember, knowledge is power, my friends. And if you continue to let people force feed you bullshit, then you're going to follow in the road of ignorance. And ignorance is always evil. Knowledge is power. The more educated a person is, that makes this a person a more powerful person. So remember that. Let me just explain a little bit about my methods of astrology to everyone. Like I said, I don't practice modern astrology. You'll never hear me say, oh, Leo's in 28 degrees of this. Because I'm not into the mathematical jargon like modern astrology does and Vedic astrology does. I focus on the 12 houses of the zodiac. Each house has a human emotion. In modern astrology, you have the north and south nodes of the moon. I call them dragon head and tails. Modern astrology does not even recognize these aspects of our own star chart. And they are probably the most important aspects of a human's chart. Remember a few years ago when the astronomer came out and said that the zodiac has changed? And it's switched, and now Capricorns are now Sagittarius, and Sagittarius are now uh, Scorpio. I remember seeing this on the Today Show when that chick Meredith Vieira was on. She goes, I was always a Capricorn, now I'm a Sagittarius. You're still a Capricorn, lady. We need science. We need people with logic and reason, but just because you can't see it, touch it, or feel it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And all those of you in the paranormal world, you know what I mean. <laughs> What I'm trying to get at here is this astronomer was trying to say the zodiac change. Now, Fucus is very real. He is a constellation up there. When I look in my telescope, sometimes I can see the planet of a F or the star of a Fucus. He's there. When I incorporate a dragon head and tail into your star pattern, that's your 13th sign, my friends. We all have one. We even have a hidden one. And everyone's is different, which makes no two Capricorns, no two Aquariuses, and no two Sagittariuses exactly alike. I'm completely different from a lot of my Capricorn counterparts. Capricorn is either completely religious or completely agnostic and atheist. Libra's kind of the same way. So, with that being said, I'm just going to kind of explain a little something to you that I want to read to you. I do this all the time when I'm explaining this type of astrology to everyone. The one good thing about astrology is that it doesn't do the whole mathematical jargon. It's very simplistic in its teachings, and it works from a housing system. Remember that we have, each of us have the whole zodiac. We all have the whole zodiac within our chart. Each house represents a human emotion. There's 12 hours in a day. There were 12 apostles. There were 12 tribes of Israel. There are 12 signs in a zodiac. And there are 12 human emotions. First, first house represents yourself and your soul's purpose. So I'll use myself as an example, Capricorn. Your second house is your wealth and possessions. And everyone's zodiac sign is a different sign for that house. Third house is your communication and your siblings. 
Your fourth house is your mother, your home, your family, and your emotions. And you think about a basic zodiac that starts with April being the baby, moving to uh, moving to Taurus, and then from Taurus to Gemini, and then to the fourth house of Cancer. Cancer is the mother of the zodiac. Then you have the fifth house, which is love, creativity, and children, and speculation. Your sixth house energy is health and work and service to this world. Your seventh house is marriage, partnerships, and contracts. And your eighth house is, this is life and death. This is in incorporated funds, and this is the sex house. This is the sex energy in your chart. Ninth house is foreign lands, religion, books, and the law. Your tenth house is father and career. If, if cancer is the mother of the zodiac then who is the father of the zodiac the engineer that would be capricorn 11th house friends and wishes this is your house of wishes and friends your 12th house is your subconscious your dreams those of you who have had readings done by me know that your natal placement within one of these housing systems takes on a very accurate description of your own self I use my own self as an example. I have a natal dragon's head in Pisces. It resides right in my third house of communication. This is no wonder I do radio. I also have Gemini in my sixth house of health, work, and service to the world. Gemini represents communication, broadcasting, radio, DTM also has another radio host with this aspect. She has the same position as I do, different sign, and that's our own Miss Beautiful Christina George of Paranormal Connections and um, a couple other shows. I'm sorry, Christina, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> we, I love you, though, but you see why she is so good at radio and has so many shows? Because her natal dragon's placed right in her third house of communication. So we all have benefits to this and we all have positive and negatives in our own stars if we learn our negatives we can be better service to this world so um, with that being said it's a very unique method of astrology I've been very blessed to have come across it I've been very blessed to have learned this I don't always agree with everything that my teacher has said. I've had many arguments with him in the past about certain things that I can't get into here on air because they're personal and private. But this is something that I'm very thankful that I have learned. Now, I am going to be doing some tarot readings if anybody calls. If nobody calls, you don't even have to call. If you, I'm in the chat room. I'm just, I'm busy yakking right now, so I'm not communicating. But I'm going to give you the full moon forecast because um, I'm going to have a guest on next week, and it will be DTM's very own Jason Stanton from Ghost Chat Radio, you know, the bad boy, the paranormal, paranormal rebel. He'll be on with me next week, and I'll be interviewing him, and this will give my, my listeners who followed me over kind of an opportunity to listen to another host from this network, and through the next few months, I will be having several other hosts on, including Christina George, who I've already talked to, and we're going to nail down a date here in August or September. And I'll be having a lot of other interesting guests. I'm trying to get Gerald Salente on with me. Those of you who know him, he's the uh, gentleman who talks about, he does a show called Trends. He's always talking about the economy, and he's right on the money. I just absolutely adore him. He's wonderful. We're going to have a lot of interesting guests on from time to time. And was trying to get someone on today from the Bunker Report. This is a group of guys who, they're watching what's going on up in Yellowstone. It was a little late in the day, and I never made contact with them again. I sent them a message, and they didn't reply. So we're, I'll try and get them on on August, uh, when is it, August 1st, I think I go on again solo and I'm going to talk all of every, the first of every month just get used to this the first of every month I do a whole hour dedicated to your sky sign so for August it will be Leo back on the third I my last broadcast for blog talk 
I did all about cancer. So just so you know, and then throughout the weeks, I'll have guests and stuff. And tonight, I'm offering my services of tarot reading. I do tarot reading a little bit differently. Um, I practice the astro tarot. I only use the 22 cards of the major arcana. I stick with accordance to the old Hebrew alphabet and the Kabbalah. And it's not that I turn my nose up at, at the, the regular tarot. It's just I have found with the method of astrology that I've been taught, this works very well, especially if I'm doing a 12-house reading on you, which is something I can't provide for you here on air. And it's not something I would do here on air because there are cards that come up that are very private and are hitting in certain the 12 houses. But I do do a three-card spread, a past, a present, and a future. You ask me a question, you give me a birth date, and I'll pick the cards for you and tell you what's going on. I want to give you the full moon forecast. Like I said, Jason Stanton will be with me next week, so I won't have time to get into this. But on Saturday, July 26th, we have a new moon in Leo. And the planet that are in charge for the next five days on that date are going to be Venus and the Sun. Venus is the goddess of love, and the sun represents children, represents the heart. Love and romance will be in the air, and the next two weeks will bring great surprises and opportunities for many of us. Now, this limitation will play a major role in your love life, people, and the influences will be on the children and your wishes, as Leo does rule children. With that being said, um, on a negative note, and I always have to bring the negative with the positive, some of you may experience a love loss, a breakup. Don't worry. The stars have better for you in store, and love, a new love is probably just right around the corner for some of you. So the next two weeks are good for any endeavors. You need to follow the universal laws of the moon. And what do I mean by this? I mean that for, from a new to a full moon, this is a great time of growth, movement, making things happen, signing contracts, making deals, getting married, getting engaged. It's a green light. From the full to the new is a red light. This is a time of planning, meditation, reflection, cleaning up, banishing around your home, your business life. This isn't a the time to go and book an airline ticket, go on a vacation, unless you purchase those tickets in a good moon, it won't be blessed by the stars, and doing so may bring harm to many people in the end. That is my forecast for Saturday, July 26th, starting with the new moon in Leo. It should be a good two weeks, and Leo, August 1st, I will have your full forecast on everything. So with that being said, I'm going to go and take, I went a little over time here, so I'm going to go ahead and take a one minute break and I'll be back and get my tarot cards ready. I see a lot of people in the chat room, so I want to kind of converse with you guys for a minute. If nobody calls in and you want a tarot reading, just give me your name and your date of birth and I can do it right from here and, and talk to you. That's the beauty of technology. So, one minute break, and I'll be right back.
Sounds great. Well, thank you guys so much. I didn't get this response at the other place, so this is really cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up my chat here so I can see the birthday. I'm going to do Chris first, date of birth 12-9-98. You are a Sagittarius. And I'm going to pick three cards, past, present, future. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Well, Chris, you are a Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the sign of philosophy. And it is the sign of um, traveling, foreigners. Uh, your ruling planet to Jupiter. Jupiter is expansion. It's education. It can also represent the law. Now, I drew three cards here. And these cards are the first card is now I'm practicing my, my astrology deck. I just want you all to know, is a Wiccan deck. So the card, the devil, is not the devil in this deck. It's called the horned one. And the devil card is not a bad card. So I don't, and neither is the death card. So I, you know, when people go, oh my God, I drew the death card. That's, it doesn't mean that. Don't freak out on that. It's actually a very positive card. So for Chris, you, I'm going to go ahead and let me just put my cards over here. I'm working with a very small space in front of my computer. The devil. Now, this is a past card, past, present, future. And the devil card is representing that in the past you may have had to have been careful in this area where karma and mystical information has come to you. And this also means that some sort of a secret may have come your way that you have... Um, stumbled upon remember with this card you don't ever want to be dominated or abused and that can happen sometimes with this card but this is a past so something in your past chris has taken place and i guarantee you if i would do a full 12 card spread these three cards would come up somewhere in the housing system in one of those energies of your chart this would come up but the horned one, the devil is also power. The devil also represents me, the astrologer. Not that I'm a devil in any sense of the way. I do have my moments, though. <laughs> this represents me, the astrologer. So something from your past, you may have had a secret come to light that you like, you know, stumbled upon. Now the next card, this is your present, and this is the magician. The magician is a good card. I really like this card. It's actually one of my favorites. Right now, you have you are born with all the tools to succeed with the magician. This is magical power. This is intuition. In Sagittarius, right now, let me see, December, January, February, March. February, December, March, April. Right now, Sagittarius, you your the the natal the dragon is moving right through your eleventh house. The tail's on your fifth house, so you might not be too lucky in love right now for the next year, but the dragon head is presiding directly on your 11th house, which represents friends and wishes. And with the magician there, you have a lot of friends that are going to help you and bring your dreams to life. They're going to make your wishes happen. When I had this energy going through my chart, a lot of good things happened to me. It's a very positive, very positive card. Now, the third card is the is the um, future, and this is the judgment card. And the judgment card, well, it does. The judgment cards is saying that the universe is putting a judgment on you. Now, the judgment could be good or bad. It's depending on your past karma. Now, this also means that someone in your life with power is going to help you. Whatever the issue is, someone of power is getting ready to help you in a very significant manner. So, Chris, what I'd like you to do is hit me up on Facebook on Alpha Star Radio and keep in touch with me because I, I like to hear what happens to people. This, this energy, the tarot is about a two or three month window and then you redo your tarot you know every three to four months i say have a tarot done on on someone but chris those are yours and i good luck chris 
Um, you look like you got some good stars coming for you. Hang in there and look to your friends for help. All right, Lizzie. Lizzie, punch in. If it's the Lizzie I think it is, then I I'm going to give her a second, give her a second. The paranormal mayhem zone. I will. Lizzie, where are you? Okay, well, I'm going to go to the next one then, which is, uh, she did it. Okay. I knew it was her. 111461. Here we go, my New Yorker. <laughs> How you doing tonight, Lizzie? Love you, Bella. All right, let me cut those cards. Cut those cards. All right, Lizzie. Past, present, and future. Okay, Liz. The first card is the past, and you drew the Wheel of Fortune. I know you personally, so I'm, I'm not going to get into great detail here, because I know you're a very private person. Scorpios are. The past was the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is an excellent card. And in the past, you had an incredible career. An incredible career. And I know the career that you had helped others. It helped children. And that is a beautiful thing. The Wheel, the wheel of Fortune. Bear with me. The Wheel of Fortune. It's the utmost power in, in regards to financial gain, financial independence. Uh, it, it's also being taught how to use the universal laws of the moon, which I talked about earlier. You want to be ready for progressive changes because, Lizzie, the future has a lot better to offer you. And that's in the past, but you drew the strength card as your present. And the strength card is... Wherever this card is, Lizzie, you're going to have power. And I know you personally. I, you're, you have power, girl. <laughs> In more ways than one. I mean, I've talked to you before. I've done your own stars. This also rules the country of Italy. And I always heard you talk about wanting to move there. So this is a, I guarantee you, Lizzie, if we did a, 12 month on you, these three cards would come up in your chart as well, and I would have a feeling that the strength part would probably come in your seventh house of marriage, partnership, and contracts, but I could be wrong. Your third card is the seeker. Now, the seeker is Saturn. It's considered the hermit. I don't think this is true about you, though, because you, it says you don't go out enough, and you need to get out more. So... Maybe that's true. Maybe you do need to get out more, meet different people, light at the end of the tunnel. That's what this means. There's a light at the end of that tunnel. And you, you know where to find me, Lizzie. So we can talk a little bit more about this you know, in private if you'd like. So I'll, let's see. I'm getting another. I'm, getting, I'm trying to work my system here, so bear with me. Okay. Now, okay. I've got producers communicating with me and I'm trying to chat on Facebook. Lizzie, I hope that helped. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Be strong, okay? Good stars. Let's see, I'm trying to read here. I'm reading everything you guys put. Okay, Denny. Denny's the next one. 4.30.76. Let me give these cards a little shuffle. Now, Denny is a Taurus, but what's special about Denny is in divine astrology practice, Denny takes on two energies. Denny may be born under the sun sign of Taurus, but he's also born under the constellation of Aries. So, Denny, you take on two energies. You, you, you have two sets of horns. You got the bull and the Aries. Wouldn't want to get in an argument with you, Danny. <laughs> but it's all good. So here I go. I'm shuffling, cutting the cards, and here we go. Voila. 
one, two, and three. Date of birth for Denny, 4-30-76. Now, Denny, you have drawn, the first card is the Emperor. This is another great card. This is a card to be happy about, too. The Emperor, this is a past energy, powerful male energy. This is authority. This is logic and reason. This is the physical. This is also, just like another card I drew for another person, someone with power and money is going to help you or has helped you in the past to get you through whatever you had to get through. Now, in your present state, I drew the, the hangman. And the hangman, that represents that you're kind of at a, I don't know if I want to choose the word crossroads, but... This person is stuck in something. It's, it's stagnant energy right now, Denny, that you're in. Stagnant energy. And, and because you're born on 4-30-76, even though you're a Taurus, you're born in the constellation of Aries. I talked about a dragon head and tail and the energy that's taking place right now. It is really affecting March, or excuse me, April and October babies. Look at all the things that are happening in the world. I can only think of one person right now, Maya Angelou. She was a, 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 a April baby. She lost her life. That's not what's going to happen to you, my friend. But what I'm trying to say is you're in something stagnant right now. I have a relative that is has a similar birth date, and just things aren't going right for them. Tor or, uh, Aries is really suffering right now. And if any mm -hmm. of you out there are Aries or Libra, contact me on my um, Facebook page, Alpha Star Radio, Alpha Star Radio at gmail.com if you want to ask me a more personal question. I am always here for you guys. You can also go to alphastarradio.com. That's my website for more information. But right now, Denny, you are in some stagnant situation. You must move on. Whatever is holding you back, hon, you have got to let go. This also indicates that the past may be coming back into your life. I don't know if you're having you know, an ex-wife's returned or, or an ex-lover or something's coming back from your past. Denny, work on yourself and move on and get going with life. You've got a lot of, of things to do in life. And we need those warriors in the Zodiac, such as yourself. Now, your third card is your future. You drew the moon. And I said earlier, the moon is where all of our emotions are. The moon is obviously cancer. This is a connection with a family member. This has to do with real estate. So in the future right now, in the next couple of months, Denny, I have a feeling that you're going to be dabbling in some real estate, either buying or selling a home. You may be dealing with a family member that is having to deal with real estate. Don't let your family members put too much pressure on your psyche. Just remember, you're, you're only human and can only do so much. So best of luck to you, Denny. And like I said, don't let family drag you down. Be strong because the future has a lot more to offer you. And I'm not that far away if you need to get a hold of me. I'm here to help. All right. I have four, three more minutes and I can only do one more, and so I'm going to go quickly here. And I'll do these again. If you enjoy this, I will start doing these more often. Next birthday is Cheryl, 4 -52, And I have another Aries on board here. Hello, Aries. Hello, Cheryl. I'm sure this year has been kind of rough on you as well, I bet. <laughs> Cheryl, past, present, and future. And here we go. Bear with me, Cheryl. My cards are sticking. They, they're getting old, and I just can't seem to part with this deck. You know, as a tarot reader, there's just certain cards and certain decks that I identify with, and this is one of them. I don't care how old they are, and I choose to use them because they're pretty darn accurate. So, Cheryl, bear with me. They seem to be sticking together for some reason. Okay. 
Cheryl. You have drawn the chariot for the first card. The chariot represents, this is also kind of a crossroads. The chariot is, how do I explain this in the words that you're going to understand? I think in the past you've taken some kind of a trip somewhere. You went on vacation somewhere. You're at a crossroads, but, but Cheryl, a new road is coming for you. A new road is ahead. I told you this energy is really affecting Aries right now. So I need you to be strong and realize that this is going to disappear soon. Second card I drew was the Magician. Magician, I said, this is right on you right now. You're born with all the tools to succeed. You have the magical power. You have the capability, the intuition to make it happen, girlfriend. Make it happen. All right? Now, Cheryl, the last card I drew is the tower. And this would make sense for an Aries to draw this. Now, the tower card, you're, I can't sugarcoat this show. Some bad times are coming, but the tyrannic energy that's coming is going to make you stronger. Everything has to be crushed down to rebuild again. You're not going to be able to control others, Cheryl, but you're going to have to try and control yourself. I want you to be strong because a rebirth is definitely coming for you. Now, Cheryl, because you did draw the tower card, and in my opinion, that's probably the scariest card in the whole deck, in my opinion. I, If you want more answers, hit me up. I'm going to help you, okay? So I am out of time almost. Boy, an hour went fast. I may have, if you guys join my Facebook page, like it. I might, during the weekend, offer a t an hour session on Facebook of this. So if you are interested in doing this some more, I'm more than happy to provide this information for you. But I am almost out of time, and I really enjoyed my first show here with DTM. I'm so delighted to be part of this, this family, and... And I just I'm very happy. Things are going very well for me right now. And I want to just thank everyone out there tonight for giving me that opportunity. Light and love to everyone. Have a great weekend. Next week, Jason Stanton, bad boy of the paranormal. You know him, so I can't control what he does. Should be interesting, should be fun. Always is with Jason. I'll be back next week, same time, same place. Talk to you all then. Good night, everybody. Peace.